Welcome to the Danish Refugee Council, Gambella. I'm Bron Hilliarens. I'm the area manager responsible for our program and operations in this region. The Gambella region hosts the largest proportion of refugees in Ethiopia, which is hosting the second largest refugee population on the African continent. The latest registration that took place in 2019 formally recorded well over 300,000 South Sudanese refugees living in Gambella. The Danish Refugee Council, or DRC, has been working with the Ethiopian government, humanitarian community and the United Nations to provide assistance and services to refugees in Gambella since 2011. With funding from the European Commission Civil Protection Humanitarian Aid Operations, or ECHO, and other donors, DRC has constructed 3,662 tea shelters, or transitional shelters, in Gambella since 2016. Tea shelters are longer term houses made from local materials and in traditional styles, much more so than emergency shelters made from plastic materials or tents. These tea shelters provide quality homes to about 18,500 people who have been displaced by conflict in South Sudan. Such shelter is essential to dignity in displacement. The most amazing thing about the tea shelter program is it involves everyone. The DRC team works on the ground with the Ethiopian Government Agency for Refugee and Returnee Affairs and UNHCR to plan the site for the shelters. Lots of international and national NGOs work shoulder to shoulder with us in the camps every day and, most importantly, the refugee community itself is part of constructing the homes that they will live in. As a rights-based organisation, DRC works with beneficiaries as rights holders to decide and influence the decisions that affect their lives and enhance their ability to enjoy their rights. This includes hiring refugees to support DRC projects. For example, refugees play key roles as grass collectors and grass thatchers for the shelter roofs. Recruiting refugees to contribute to the construction of their community's shelter empowers them by providing livelihoods, opportunities, recognising their skills and potential and expanding opportunities for them to contribute to the development and safety of their own communities. As shelter teams, on a weekly basis we normally depart early in the morning in Gambela towns. We reach here in the field site at half past eight. After our arrival here, we sum our activities in uh, the compound here. We have uh, three groups. One of the group is the one that making pole productions, bamboo splitters. The other group, the group of mobilizers, they normally go to the site to mobilize the refugee community through the health of refugee central committees in order to participate effectively in mud plastering, grass collection, hole digging, and grass thatching. The other team is the team that have been led by foreman. The foreman goes with the carpenters. They tweet the protected pole here in the compound. They took all the material, the construction material, and they start the construction in the field. Here in uh, Winyel Camp, uh, when we start the uh, construction, we have uh, two types of construction, uh, emergency, Bajaj and uh, Tukul. This is emergency, the time the refugees are arriving at the first time, we just give them for accommodation this emergency Bajaj. After this emergency Bajaj, we are going to construct this Tukul for refugees, because uh, this Bajaj, they cannot, uh, they cannot stay there for a long time, because uh, it can fall down by wind, it can fall down by uh, a human being. That's why we select this uh, Tukul for refugees. Before I start my work, I contact with a refuge representative to selection a carpenter. Then before construction, material arrangement, survey and site cleaning, hole digging by refuge community. And also I starting frame structure, roof structure, bamboo roof, bamboo walling, plastic sheet covering and brazing and mudding, door fixing and painting up to grass touching. Here when we construct shelter, we have uh, frame, we have uh, bamboo, we have roofing. After roof we cover plastic sheet, after brazing, then uh, we have grass. Uh, when we have uh, grass, we use uh, refugees for uh, searching for mobilizer, uh, including uh, Mading, 
this matting will be uh, internal and external just for the structure to be more strong and uh, the lifespan will be also increased a minimum of uh, three years. This design by uh, UNHCR and by ARA and also by uh, refuge communities. The new water permit on the name at the new joy. Never know your channel, which are carried the RT to the Nego Yang at it. Carjarzen come and can a dear tea lawning at it. The lawyer Tabaco, you can only do the Jarjar, go beneath it. There, that's all nowhere. Here, I'm a dear. Dude, me can hear you be dear tea, be name Mukuruk, be name Mosegale. Benedulbenecott. Dalekalamene, <laughs> Part of what we know is that uh, the refugees who come to, to Ethiopia come from a war-torn zone and one of the things is that they are traumatized. So the impact this project is giving, most importantly to mention, is a shelter, a home, away from home, where these people can at least find some peace, a place to, to lay their back, and also to start living like a better life. Part of what we've been doing with EU humanitarian funds is to try to capacitate the refugees. So when they come in and they are settled in the homes, the shelters that are built by DRC, part of what we do is to try to make them understand that the skill of learning how to make shelters, equally with other kind of skills, should trickle down in them, that they will be able to sustain themselves, and we capacitate them by training the Masons. And by this, and uh, with the recent declarations that are there, that refugees have equal opportunities just like the people of Ethiopia, meaning that with time, they could also find jobs as Masons, they could also do some carpentry work, and that will give them some income. Capacitating them and uh, making them more sustainable, that, that's what we are looking into. I think I must be very grateful for the humanitarian fund that we've received from you, European Commission, because uh, apart from alleviating the levels of human suffering for the people who came in as refugees, it is also helping the local communities who will in, in return, as we try to make the refugees also learn these skills, there is a trickle-down effect, which is, uh, which is also an added advantage. 
also there is the, the cohesiveness between the host community and the refugees and I, I mean that is quite something to reckon with.